This, my guys, is the Church of Live. Hi. Welcome back to another Punishing Grey Raven video. My name is Lace and today I wanted to talk about all three lives and kind of like my thoughts behind them because I came into Punishing Grey Raven like semi-prepared like in terms of team comps and who I should build, who should invest in. However, having played it for like a proper month now and I did play a little bit on TW but it was it's different. It's different when you're like on a catch-up server, right? I feel like there was a lot to be learned about each of the different lives in terms of like the team comps, investment priorities and all of that. And so it's for that reason that I want to actually run through each one of them and well... I want to answer the question which one is the best live and the reality is is that there is no like best live like each live is for different scenarios and so just to jump ahead all the way to the end like by the end the conclusion when you hit end game you're probably going to be juicing all three lives anyway however especially because we're an early game like there are a lot of investment choices that you should make so like for example you see all this I should not have done any of this it's just a lot of like this kind of stuff like I guess well what I've learned what I should have invested in and so I guess with that being said let's go through each live and actually like evaluate evaluate them each of their skills and like where they should actually fit into the game and so let's start with b-live so if i hop over here let's go details you'll see that she is a physical 100 support however if we go over and look at s-live you'll see that they are actually doing like the same thing physical 100 and support as well now this is really interesting because like if you look at it like from the philosophy of like oh you have like a best in slot team and every team should only have one healer then you're like well aren't they like technically competing for that physical healer spot and my answer to that is actually no so no, no, not really. Now, why exactly do I say that? So let me hop over to B Live. Let's go into her skills and this will make it very, very obvious. Really, this is what gives B Live the edge over S Live in like your end game teams. I'm not talking all end game teams. I'm talking a lot of end game teams. So it is essentially like an offensive passive. And so in a nutshell, when Liv is in reserve, so when she's not on the field, physical damage of allies on the field increases by 10%. And when we hit end game, you're going to be like scrounging for every single little bit of damage. However, what you are going to notice is that this is only unlocked on the triple S rank. And so what I want to say is that up until you hit triple S rank on B Liv, she is like not technically better than S Liv. And so it's for this passive that you want to be farming Liv shards every single day to make sure that you can get her to SSS eventually. I think it's projected to take you about like two or three months, something like that. But up until then, her and S Liv, I would say they're kind of like the same role, right? They're just physical healers. However, what is interesting about S Liv, so if we pop over to S Liv, she's really interesting because she kind of feels a lot like a pseudo DPS. Like there are a lot of skills that are geared around doing damage, but I guess it's not really like her main role, although like I have used her as a DPS. But essentially, if I was to say that the purpose of B Live is to give you that 10% extra physical damage in endgame, then I would say that the purpose of this live, the S live, is to pretty much be an unkillable healer in co-op or like harder content. There is 100% content where you want to like face roller or it's just really hard that you want like somebody that's like really, really solid. And S live is exactly that. So like if you do play her properly, she is like pretty much unkillable. However, it's for these kinds of reasons that I have actually like leveled up her skills like this because I've used her actually as more like of like a main carry. And so that makes it all really interesting, right? So whilst I don't regret investing in all of this for her because I've like gotten a lot of mileage, I do regret investing into B live skills like these ones over here, the ones that are like not the QTEs because of course the QTEs and the passive support over here are the most important skills, especially for your healers. But yeah, I really wish that I didn't invest into B live and instead put all of those things like into uh, my S Kamui, for example. Like, don't get me wrong, guys. Eventually, you're going to be wanting to max out this B live anyway, including all of those other skills that I'm saying that I regret. However, again, this is not the time. Like, I should have been instead juicing a whole bunch of like DPSs and tanks more. Because this is more of like a DPS oriented game. Like, I do feel like there's a lot more investment or like a lot more return on investment when you go into the DPSs and the tanks. And so, yeah, that's kind of like how I'm feeling about the B live and the S live. B live is a safe investment. However, However, beyond like the QTE and this support healing skill, I think like she should just be left as is. But eventually, especially as you hit this triple S skill, you will want to juice her out anyway. But in my opinion, now is not the time. And if you want to invest in anything, invest into your tanks and DPS. On the other hand, to summarize the S live, she is pretty much like your unkillable. You're going to take her to like Tower of Babel. You're going to take her to like co-op. Generally speaking, it's actually quite hard to die with S live, especially with like her core passive as well as like this bad boy over here. Her ult is so freaking good in co-op because like if 
one of your teammates die, all you have to do is like hit your ult and then just stand on top of them. Hitting your ult is going to give you guys like damage resistance for physical damage up by 75%. And then on top of that, you're also healing using light penalty because of the core passive. So like this boy over here, light penalty five times and you'll heal like according to Liv's attack. And so therefore when you're ulting, what you're going to be doing is that you're going to be doing damage to the enemy. You're going to be like trying to res your teammate and then you're going to also be like upping your physical resistance. And so essentially you're pretty much like guarantee the resurrection of like your teammate if they do die in co-op. I personally think that S live is fantastic. However, again, in a DPS oriented game, you do want the B live triple S like in the end game. But I will run her in co-op as much as I can because she is just so freaking easy to play and so freaking lit. But yeah, aside from the signature move, like just quickly looking at the core passive over here, essentially she just keeps on healing, right? Just smashing out those three pings. You're just going to keep on healing and healing and healing and there is no cooldown on that. And so I do think that she is really, really good at dishing heals if you do play her actively. And so that's why I really mentioned like co-op. If you are playing S live like passively, so what I mean is like in reserve or like not on the field. So you're really only you are going to be using like this guy and this guy, right? So on the QTE, she heals allies for 88.24% of her attack. And looking at B lives one, she heals allies for 17.06 of her maximum HP as well as dealing damage. Now it's for this one's reason that deals 170% physical damage that I think that there is a little bit more versatility in B live. And the reason is like, and although it's not optimal, you can technically have the option to run some of those like defense reduction kind of like memories. However, you do actually need to deal damage to be able to take advantage of them. So let me just find one for example. So Voltaire, as you can see, attacks reduce the target's defense by 10%. So like, as you know, S Liv does not like do an attack on her QTE. And so like, therefore B Liv just being able to trigger this already makes her like a lot better in my books for, for your passive or for like your reserve healer that is. But yeah, otherwise, like I know I'm talking up B Liv a lot, but like realistically speaking, like S Liv is a lot of fun to play. But something I do want to address like in terms of a lot of like what the people were saying at the very start, like, oh, you got to reroll for S Liv and then pick S Kamui, like stuff like that. I actually don't think that S Liv is really mandatory, especially right now, right? Maybe later on in the game when content gets like a lot harder, she will be like well, desired really hard. But at this point, if I had an S selector again, and if I was to choose between S Liv and S Kamui, I'd still say S Kamui is like more irreplaceable. Whilst I do love playing S Liv, I do think that S Kamui is like dark tank kind of niche like you can't feel that but her being a physical healer she can be substituted with B live and so I guess with that being said I want to move on to A live because I think I've talked about B live and S live enough but again they are both fantastic characters if it were me I would only invest like into the QTE and healing for the B live and I wouldn't regret actually fully investing into like the S live so all of these different skills okay so let's move on over to A live so this is bad girl over here let's hit her skills up all right so let's first talk about A live and like what exactly she represents on the field. Why A live is so good is actually for a very, very similar reason to why B live is so good. So it's actually this guy right here. So you do need SS to be able to unlock this skill. So within the ion field created by X lightning lure. So that's just one of her skills. And so just making sure you guys know what skill it is. It's her QTE. QTE lives uses the X lightning lure, but essentially this deals lightning damage and then leaves an ion field that heals the allies within it for 21.32% of Lux's attack. And so just remember that the skill is two part. It does damage and then it also does like the healing over time. And so moving back to this boy over here, within the ion field created by X Lightning Lua, lightning damage of allies increases by 20%. That is really freaking massive. So essentially, if you do her QTE and you drop that freaking field and you stand in it, not only are you getting healed, but you're also getting the lightning damage up. The biggest weakness to this is that it makes you a little bit immobile because like you have to kind of be in that field. However, like just with like a little bit of practice, a little bit of play and some smarts, like you should definitely be able to take advantage of this. I personally think that this passive is fantastic. I completely understand like why she is picked up for the lightning team. However, again, you do need her on SS. And so if you do want to be prepared for S Bianca, like she is your gal. You want to be pushing for the SS A live before S Bianca drops. However, then becomes like the issue of shard priority. Because as you guys already know, like the shards actually get really, really expensive in terms of stamina, right? So this bad boy over here, as you can see, I farmed out the B live shards. However, I did not farm out the A live shards. And this is only because I was extremely lucky to be able to actually get her to SS without farming a single shard. On the other hand, I was super unlucky because I didn't get a Karenina and so my war zone is like really gimped, but let's save that for another video, yeah. But essentially, each time you're farming one single shard, it actually costs 30 stamina, which is quite significant. I don't know why it's not showing up here. But if you put all your freaking stamina like into these guys over here, you won't have enough stamina to be able to farm other things, especially the event. I personally think that farming for your B live to get to triple S is more important than getting your A live to 
double S. With that being said though, like I completely get why people would focus on both of them. However, there is the case of like waiting for that A selection feature on banners. And so if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, let me cop over to a banner. And so I can't remember actually which one it is, if it's like this one over here or if it's the standard banner. But essentially what you can do is that you can actually select like uh, one of the A characters to focus. The UI looks very, very similar to this guy over here. So if I click into this one, you can see that there is a change set over here. And so like this is focusing on these two weapons, right? There's going to be a feature in a very, very soon update. I think it's in like the next patch or like the one after that in which you can actually go into the banner when you roll on it, you can select an A focus. And so what a lot of people should be doing is they should be selecting the A live for focus and they should be able to get a whole bunch of her shards. And so you probably should not be farming overly much from that stage I showed before. And so it's for these kinds of reasons that I'm like B live is probably higher priority because it's actually harder to get her. Whereas when you do your pulls, especially for like SB anchor, for example, you can be focusing on like the A live and then hopefully you'll get enough copies of her to be able to like push her to SS straight away instead of like having to farm for months for her. So yeah, in my opinion, you should be farming for B live because it's a lot harder to guarantee B live, especially from stuff like this. So yeah, just to recap on A live, like generally speaking, you're going to be wanting her like in reserve and then dropping the QTEs for this sick field. And it's this EX lightning lure field that is really her selling point for like her being in the lightning team. And so because she's like providing like a very similar kind of utility to B live where she's just giving you extra damage or giving you heals on the QTE and the healing passive, I would say that you should treat A live kind of like the same as B live, like in which you would actually only level up the QTE and this support healing skill over here. You're not going to be spending overly much time with her on the field, like to be able to justify these guys over here. And obviously eventually you will be upgrading these. However, like again, like I don't know about you guys, but I am so constrained for resources. And so you got to really be smart about it. Probably like only after you've done your tanks and your DPSs, should you start looking at these ones over here. But with that being said, I would say that that's actually not too far off. Like being able to juice everything probably like a month, two months away, especially with our event that's actually just like showering us with stuff. So hopefully you guys aren't going too hard on trying to reroll for the resonances. But if you're just like looking at all of the other stuff, like especially the skill points, that's like relatively cheap as well as like all of the cogs, but like, oh my God, the character EXP pods, like, oh my gosh, the characters, they just suck up all of these EXP things. But yeah, generally speaking, you should be able to get all of your characters up like in the next few months, like relatively easily. It's just, especially now, like you just got to be smart about it. Like for me, I'm getting kind of crippled because I invested so much into B-Live. And I'm also just like getting really crippled because of my S Nanami. So if I show you guys the skills over here, you can see I over invested into her. The last thing I want to talk about for A-Live is that generally speaking, I would say that she probably is like the best healer for all of them. Because B-Live and S-Live technically like don't really do anything for your physical damage right now. The only difference between like all three lives is how well they can heal then, right? I would say that A-Live is a better healer than your B-Live and like she also does the damage. So that's also really good because remember, this is going to help you trigger that Voltaire. But on top of that, A-Live actually scales her heal off of her attack, which is different to your B-Live, which scales off of her HP. And so what that means is that not only is she dependent on like her weapon, so like we've got that bad boy over here, or like supposed to be this one over here. Not only is this attack going to be scaling into her healing, but also all of these memories down here, like four, five, and six. Obviously, I don't have anything on her right now, but like generally speaking, especially in game design, like heal over times are going to be healing you more than like straight like direct heals. And so that's why if there are any game modes which require like healing, like there should be a couple that come to mind with the constant ticking damage. And what I am referring to is Phantom Pain Cage. So like some of these bosses in some of these modes actually do like some ticking damage over time. And it's really, really annoying. And so that's why like healers are really critical, especially from chaos to hell. So this ticking damage that I'm talking about only occurs in chaos and hell, and it doesn't always occur in chaos. I'm pretty sure every single boss has it in the hell mode. And so like what you can do is like when you get up to it, you can actually check when you click into it and see the move set. However, there are a couple of bosses that don't have it in chaos. So for example, Kamu, he does not have it. And so guys, the reason I'm bringing this up is because like you've got your A live actually doing a heal over time, which actually is going to counteract this like damage over time from like these bosses. Well, not this one, but like the other ones. Nope. Let me correct myself. You will encounter that on hell mode for Kamu. But yeah, it's going to make that ticking a lot less painful for hell mode. And it's just going to give you that extra little bit of survivability to hopefully burst them down ASAP. And so if you guys are not using a live for like your phantom pain cage, especially for like your last three of the hell ones, then I really would recommend actually juicing up your a live if nothing else for this then. But again, guys, remember that you want to only be doing the QTE and the heal support skill. These guys right here, same as B live. All right, guys, I think I've talked enough about live. I love live. I know everyone loves live. 
and so like let's wrap this bad boy up okay i've got a secret message and that is live city just because there's like so many lives and like who wouldn't want a city that's like occupied by all lives right and so if you guys could drop the secret message live city down in the comments below i would really appreciate it because you've actually made it all the way to the end of the video and i really appreciate that so thank you so much but otherwise please consider a like a sub a comment a follow you guys already know what it is and make sure that that notification bell is clicked on if you would like to support the channel there are a couple of ways down in the description below like affiliate links and a membership program thing come join the discord if you're feeling a little bit lonely but otherwise as live once said all good things must come to an end and so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye